Welcome back to another awesome video. So you've seen cassettes, do you know what noise reduction is for? No. It's to remove the hiss from your tape, and usually there's a switch or a button that lets you activate noise reduction. But what if your tape, what if it's 1974 and your tape deck is too old to have noise reduction? Well, we've got a product for you. Introducing the Realistic DNR1. It's Dolby in a box. Dolby in a box? Dolby in a box, yes. It was offered in 1974 in the Radio Shack catalog for 100 bucks. And it works with cassette, reel-to-reel, -reel, or even over-the-air broadcasts. Attach it to your system by simply connecting eight cables. Simple, right? Uh, that sounds simple. It's not too bad. The component itself is a nicely built solid box with real wood side panels. And although I'm displaying it vertically here, it's really designed for horizontal use with those top loader cassette decks common in the 1970s, such as this TIAC 210 stereo cassette deck. What this thing really reminds me of is the Realistic SCT-3, which we covered about three years ago in a video. It's got that kind of uh, shape designed to work on top of a console stereo, perhaps. But how does it work? We're going to demo some audio in just a moment, but conceptually it's not that complicated. As you're recording sound onto a tape, the box sits between the incoming signal and your deck and applies Dolby encoding to the audio that's being recorded. And when you're playing back, a tape, it sits between the tape deck and the amplifier and applies decoding to the signal being played. Now as I demo this, keep in mind I don't have the calibration tapes that are designed to adjust all these adjustments behind that panel and calibrate the unit to your cassette deck. It also has a built-in tone generator which I assume is used for this calibration somehow. It may not be calibrated, but I can still tell that it's working. So it works by manipulating frequencies in the audio signal. And so when I engage Dolby, you can hear the hiss go away, but to my untrained ear, a lot of the high end goes away too. In record mode, the opposite occurs. The high end increases when you turn on Dolby. This box uses the Dolby B system, which was not called Dolby B yet because it was the only consumer one available. Dolby wasn't the only game in town, but it was what was adopted for pre-recorded cassettes due to its excellent backwards compatibility. We covered other systems like ANRS and DBX in a video earlier in the year. It definitely made a difference. I used Dolby B. It was already built into the tape deck by the time I was using tapes. But what was the real world effect on cassette users? So yeah, noise reduction was on every commercial tape. And you know, kids in the 80s probably thought about it more than kids in the 90s because the 90s kids had uh, CDs and stuff. But I remember in high school in the early 90s talking about it with Mr. Parnell. Mr. Parnell, yes, that's the actor from Anchorman. Uh, and did... from the new Home Alone movie that just came out. Yeah, yeah. He, he actually did what a lot of people did was record tapes with Dolby on but play them back with Dolby off because it kind of gives that little crispness or extra high end boost if you're playing it in a worn out tape deck or boom box or something. But let's take this tape if I can get away with a couple seconds of audio and see how this deck's built in noise reduction compares to the noise reduction from the realistic DNR1. I also connect this box to my 1976 Sansui receiver which supports Dolby FM unfortunately it's not being broadcast these days. So when I flip this from regular FM, I'm going to flip it over to Dolby, and it does get a little bit higher. Hey team, we landed the contract! Yes. This web design studio just landed the gig of a lifetime. So it does, does seem to get a bit more trebly. Then I can press this button to engage the Dolby noise reduction adapter. Let's try that. Project Indeed can help them hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Instant Match instantly connects you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match so it does your sort of, job description. Indeed does sort of change the uh, tone a little bit. Now before we wrap this up, Every Dolby device tape, this is a tape deck, has this little statement about, you know, licensing. Well, let's look and see what's inside this box, uh, this DNR1. What's in the box? I have no idea. We'll just take it apart real quick. It's got it's that, that, did, did you have to repair it? Uh, no, it worked. I mean, there's no moving parts to this, but 
Inside, you see, uh, I don't think there's any chips in here. I didn't go ahead and take out that other board. but you Circuit know, you, board. Yeah, you got the back of a circuit board. There's a transformer. You can see the little adjustments. That silver stuff, I guess that's some sort of like... Uh, Wait, do transformers usually explode on power lines? That's a different type of transformer. Oh. This is like, a, I guess, a lower voltage one. But anyway, what's interesting, look at this big, giant box, and you compare it to this tape deck Wait, from... It's the, big, like Bigfoot. That box is reduced to this one little board inside this tape deck from the 80s. So there, see the little Dolby Double D symbol there on the chip? Pretty amazing how technology changes. In, in mm -hmm. There are a bunch of external noise reduction systems available. This wasn't the only one. And, of course, they're year used in, I'm assuming they're still used in recording studios. But, you know, I guess this Dolby uh, noise reduction and cassettes have sort of gone away. But thank you for joining us in this video to look at this very uh, rare and unusual device and... We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye. Bye.